nothing worse than standing in front of a girl and running out of things to say or having a conversation that is platonic, boring, lame and kind of leads to nowhere. Hey, what's up? Am I dreaming? So, in this video, I want to give you a four ingredient recipe in under 10 minutes to turn your conversation from boring, platonic into flirtatious and sexy. So let's go. Ingredient number one is the topic you choose. And actually that's a paradox because the topic you choose when it comes to conversation with women, when it comes to seduction, when it comes to flirtation actually does not matter. And here are a few principles to keep in mind. First of all, the way you ask questions. So I want you to make this rule in your head a little bit of a game, so to say. Imagine you would meet a new girl for the first time and you would have to get to know her within three questions. How would you structure these questions? Because you could say, hey, where are you from? Ah, and what's your job? Hey, and how old are you? You have like the basic bio, but you don't really get to know her. So actually what you want to do is stay in the same topic. So ingredient number one topic doesn't mean which topic or how to choose topic or how to transition from topic. It's more like, are you able to find something interesting about her in the topic you're in? And if that's then about what she's studying or where she's from or who she's living with or about her diet or about her favorite hobby or what she does on the weekends or where was her last holiday or if she's cooking herself or ordering food or if she loves her grandmother or not, it doesn't matter. It's about what you do with the topic. And second principle here is how do we make it engaging? Sure, there's more engaging topics and there's boring topics. Usually talking about the weather is not that engaging. But again, it doesn't matter. You make the conversation engaging with three things. Your voice, your face, and your body language. So, are you reacting like this? Oh, cool. Interesting. Hello. Uh, you're cute. Uh, Bruh. Hmm, didn't work. Or are you like, damn, that's crazy, right? Here I'm using my voice, my face, I'm opening my eyes and I'm leaning back. It's like a shockwave of excitement coming at me. Well, life is hard sometimes, but you're very beautiful, so you will figure it out. Thank you. <laughs> so analyze yourself. How are you using your voice, your face and your body when interacting with people? And I'm not saying you have to be a clown and I'm going to talk about that in a second, but you have to be there with her. You have to be present. You have to be engaged. You have to be excited listening to her stories. Otherwise, it's just really boring talking to you. And that's not only true with flirtation and seduction. That is true with anybody you meet and have a conversation with. Let's build on top of that. So let's say the conversation is going. You chose a good topic. You're staying in the topic and you're using your body language, voice and face we can add something to it. And what we're actually adding is space, is pausing. If we want to turn our conversation eventually into flirtatious conversations, into conversations that creates attraction, we have to add space in between our sentences. This is a huge mistake of every guy because if you're constantly talking, if you never leave a pause, it shows that you are not comfortable. It shows you're a bit nervous. It shows you want to keep the thing going and you're stressed about losing her, which actually will lead to losing her. So there's some general rules that I can give you here as well. I would say if a girl stops talking, just look at her a bit, have a little bit of a comfortable smile on your face, have good posture, of course. Again, we're using our body and our face, but wait for two seconds until you say the next thing. That's a good general rule. Of course, there is modulation. Sometimes we're really engaged in a conversation. We want to find out more and what, what happened next. But sometimes maybe it gets more serious and we're looking at her and we maybe give her a bit of a smile. Hey, where are you from? That is interesting. Not that is interesting. Can I have your number? That's bad, right? So with you pausing and actually being more grounded and leaving space in sentences, it will also be easier to have a downward reflection on your voice. It's not only about the pauses in between sentences or pauses in between her talking and you talking. It's also speaking slower. We don't want to be boring throughout the whole conversation, right? Again, there is uh, ups and downs. We want to create it dynamically, but sometimes we want to drag out a word. Maybe it adds a little bit of sensuality. Maybe it makes it easier then 
to add a downward inflection to the word. We don't always want to speak with an up tone, like this. Interesting. Okay, you're very beautiful. Very not strong, not sexy, not flirtatious. Step number three, if we build on the topic and being engaged and leaving pauses, now we can add another certain spicy flavor, which is challenges, disagreements, teasing. Basically, that means we're not the nice guy anymore that is always agreeing and is always super happy and whatever she says is true and she's so beautiful and everything is perfect. But we're a little bit more critical. We're teasing her a little bit. We can do that in a little like harsher way, calling her out on her bullshit. We can do it in a teasing way. Like, come on, no, that's not true. You're lying to me. No, I would never do that. Oh, wow, you sound dangerous. I should be careful of you. Or like, I don't believe you. Why would you say that? Or again, you can combine it with a pause and simply looking at her and being like, what? Really? Again, right? L creates tension, drags stuff out and makes her mainly think, oh my God, am I good enough? Did I do something wrong? I have to prove myself to him. He's not like the other guys. He's not just taking everything for Granted, he's challenging me. He wants to actually get to know me on a deeper level. He actually wants to find out if what I'm saying is really me or if I'm just repeating something. So it puts her on the spot a little bit, which makes her invest in you. And this is crucial in any interaction, no matter if it's on Tinder and texting, on social media, in the real world, uh, in a short time frame, in a big time frame, the investment between the man and the woman have to match roughly. It will never be the case that a guy puts in 90% of the work and she puts in 10% of the work and work can mean time, energy, uh, money, conversation, problem solving and so on, like all the different currencies. Anyway, it will never be the case that he puts in 90%, she puts in 10% and she still is attracted to him, right? That's when she's just simply using him and eventually she will leave him for another guy who just can just give her even more. So you have to match the investment. And the little uh, cherry on the top of our four part recipe is actual flirtation. What does it mean? On an average TV viewing night, how many deaths would Anyone? Nice stems. Thanks. Flirtation is such a vague term. People overthink it. They, they try to look up like certain openers or they try to find certain scenes in movie where the guy was really flirtatious or the, the girl was really horny or right before they had sex. What did he say? What was the exact line? Like in the first step here, it's not about the topic. It's not about the words. Seduction is not about what you say, it's how you say it. So flirtation actually integrates all the principles that we talked about here in this video. Are you using your body? Are you using your face? Are you using your voice? Do you put pressure on the girl? Are you sometimes adding a little cute spice with disagreements or putting pressure, but then also letting her off the hook, right? In the first section of a conversation, maybe you're challenging her a little bit and you put, you know, quite some pressure and she's investing and then you release the pressure again. You say, I'm just kidding with you. You're so cute when you try to convince me, right? So throwing in little words like cute or just staring at her, like you're staring into the stars and just like, wow, I didn't notice your eyes are so beautiful. And then you move on again. So it's those little things. It's literally, literally like spice in our, in our dish that we are creating here. It's those tiny things. It's like, you know, spice and salt that you put on top of your food sometimes that makes it taste really good. You don't have to be the sexual guy all the time, but it's good to throw it in here and there. And this is flirtation. It's integrating all of that. The challenge, the pausing, the saying cute things, the, you know, putting your balls on the table in a way by being direct, by being able to say, you look beautiful, or I really like how you smile, or I didn't notice about you before, but I'm really into that now. Or, wow, when you do that, that really turns me on. Being able to do that as a man is very powerful and that's when we take the conversation from platonic, boring, bland, nice guy to sexy, flirtatious, full of tension, full of action, full of spice that actually makes her horny. So that's it, quick recipe 
And if you want to work with me and my team, click below, book a free consultation call. We're going to analyze your situation, set goals, and then check how we can improve your dating life, your lifestyle, your life, make you a better man, make you have more fun and be happier. See you in the next video.